Michael, I was very uh, glad to get to see you play, you know, a kind of uh, a down-the-line good guy for once. I mean... <laughs> What are you clapping about, too? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mean to be reductive about, you know, what you do. No, I'm totally used to it. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like water off my back. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what appealed to you about, about this, uh, you know, whether it was the real-life Gary or the version of Gary that's presented in this, what did you... Uh, you know, appreciate it. What interested you about this project? Oh, I just read Gary's book, and um, you know, uh, honestly, any chapter in Gary's book is worth turning into a film or a TV show or something. I mean, all these adventures that he's been on, and I was fascinated by his mind, and I was <laughs> fascinated by his compassion and his empathy. And you know, I just find the the art of negotiation to be so so essential and such a mystery to me personally um, that I was interested in learning more about it. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to have you know access and conversations with Gary going into this again? Do you want or do you want to just sort of you know rely on the material that's in front of you and and put together a character for yourself? No, I, I spent as much time as I could with Gary. Yeah. He was around, he was very gracious uh, with his time. Uh, Gary and David were both very gracious with their time. Um, I'm, I'm sure it had to be awkward for them at moments, uh, watching us fumble around trying to, to recreate this, but they were both so generous and uh, you know, a great resource. I would ask Gary questions every day when he was on set, during scenes, after takes, you know. We'd have dinner at night and tell tales and stuff. And uh, yeah, the more time I could spend with Gary, the better. Yeah. You come out of something like this feeling like maybe maybe you could have been an FBI negotiator if things had. Done. No, I I, I I I I mean seriously, I mean that's. I mean that is funny, but I I, I would never I would never underestimate. I, I, Gary is a truly special human being, and what he did, what he attempted to do not only in this situation, but all the situations I'm aware of that he's been in, yeah. it's, it's pretty miraculous. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty selfless. You know, Gary yeah. uh, had to spend a lot of time away from his family, and, uh, and that was hard. And um, it was hard for his family. But he always just, he wanted to get people out alive, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's a beautiful thing, yeah. Taylor, if I may, I mean, first of all, I just want to praise you for a remarkable uh, performance in this miniseries. I mean, this is... Thank you. Just, I mean, totally uh, transformative. I will never see you as Tim Riggins after this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, from, from your perspective... I think you're the only one that will say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, Tell me just about, you know, first being asked to do this and, and, you know, what, you know, the considerations are that you have to make as an actor to be, you know, asked to portray a person that at least we think we know from, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, I was 12 when it happened in 93 and then I get a call from the agent and uh, I really had no idea about Koresh or the Davidians or that part of religion, really, of what he studied and the story. And um, I was flattered right away that I was being considered just because he is, you know, you read whatever on him. If you're skimming the news or Wikipedia, it's like, oh, wow. Even if that's true, you're going somewhere. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's deep, you know? So, and I think that's, you know, an actor's, that's, it's kind of why you do what you do or you just, keep trying to do good work so you get an opportunity to swing like that. And I um, had an amazing two hour meeting with these guys in Venice and got along really well. And, um, and that's where I think the wheels really honestly started turning of, of the real story and, and who Dave was and, and just trying to wrap your head around that. And then 
you know, you get the role, and I just kept asking for more time to lose the weight, obviously, but most importantly, try and wrap your head around these things that, you know, at times are incredibly unrelatable, and that I don't have a clue of why, and he did certain things and believed certain things, and that's where you beg for more time <laughs> to, to try and figure it out and marry yourself emotionally and ground this and, and play, as, play it out as authentic as you can do it, you know? Did you want to do kind of, you know, a deep dive into, you know, the research of it? Did you want to sort of, you know, just depend on the screenwriting and let that... I don't think you... Once you go down that rabbit hole... <laughs> uh, no, I, I love it. I think the process is why you do it, you know? I, I love that investigation. I, I love batting ideas back and forth. I think trying to wrap your head around, trying not to bring your own belief system in it and have a clean slate and, and uh, you know, from picking up the guitar and learning to sing to obviously the scripture and his upbringing and, and uh, you know, slowly molding, you know, and, and assimilating as much as the material as you can and, and always reacting to, it could be a line or it could be a beat, but reacting to your gut instinct when something starts to really hit you, you know, and that was a big thing for me. Yeah. And did you already know My Sharona going into this, or did you I pick didn't that know. up? <laughs> a lot of it, people, like Dave obviously sang, and, but he had a lot of his own music that he had written. Tibbs will go deep and tell you that stuff, too, and that was cool, batting ideas around, too. But, um, so I was learning a lot of his own songs, um, and then they sprung my Sharon on me. It's like, <laughs> let's go, you know? So that was so much fun to, to play, just because you know where it's going, obviously, and when you get those lighter beats, you got to just milk that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I thought was so remarkable about the series, and we see it in the first episode, and I was also uh, able to see the, the next uh, two, but I mean, often the the lives of the uh, you know the Branch Davidian members, in some ways, is so uh, you know quotidian, and it's so you know the things that they that we see them do are kind of you know commonplace and things that people would do every day. And of course, we know there are these other things that they're engaged in that are problematic. But I wonder, you know, especially for the cast members who who played those people, you know, just if you can talk a little bit about, you know. <laughs> Portraying those characters and and you know trying to bring you know a, a humanity to them and and you know playing them as people who at least you know in their own experiences I suppose thought they were doing things that were kind of normal and everyday. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> um, I think. I think I told, yeah, you guys know. So I was close to backing out like six weeks before we hit camera. Um, we can laugh now. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, I know. It's like, um, but it, it, it is, you know, I think very early in prep, I was very guilty of bringing my own baggage or preconceived notions to who Dave should be and, you know, and, um, that harmed the process in so many ways and didn't know and kept a lot of these doors closed. And um, and once I let that go and stopped judging him and, and went for just the pure authenticity of it all in the story and you, again going, letting the material serve it and not other people's opinions, uh, that was huge for me. So I I don't aim for empathy, I don't aim for, you know, I just, I think you just want to play authentic. And whatever that brings, I think you can have closure with whatever they feel about it in that sense that, man, I was real with it. And, and to have Dave there with me and texting me psalms and, that I've requested, um, you know, and to have these beats and to have these guys allow me to just fly, man. Like we would do, you know, the beauty of Koresh in that way is in the same breath he would be hateful and beautiful and scary and, and as an actor that is a dream to go to go into. So, you know, as John would say, there's no wrong take, so be careful if you say that to us. <laughs> you know, you know I can, can I add to that real quick? There's 
there's the intensity to David, you know, and you can you can see that the fire and brimstone part. You can play that, and that, a lot of people have played that in the past. Things that have been done. But what Taylor nailed was the soft spoken side of Koresh to the point where it gave me chill so many times when you have no idea. Where it's that person that you're really relating to, you're going, oh my God, this guy he just blew my mind again. He just showed me something that I'd never seen before. And now I'm gonna be thinking about this all. I won't be able to sleep because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be thinking about this study that I just got. And you know, the, 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 that kind of tenderness, he had 90% of the time, 80% 80 of the time, <laughs> that, okay, yeah, that people don't, will never see because all you're hearing is what the press is saying about him and they're showing the pictures of him playing guitar slowed down so it looks like he's in some demonic trance. And it's, it's really not fair. I mean, you're being manipulated, that's the thing. And, and you nailed that kind of soft person I, it just in a, such a great way. I was so just amazed. It's amazing. It really it gave it, it, my mother too. It gave her chills. She was, like, <laughs> she was like, "Oh my God, that voice!" She gave her different yeah. chills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>